All right, everybody, today we're going on a wild adventure through one of the best automotive collections on the planet, especially if you love muscle cars. Now, there are, of course, a wide variety of exotics. I mean, we've got Lamborghinis, we've got Ford GTs, we've got Jags, Porsches, Ferraris. I mean, we've got all sorts of stuff. And of course, the main hall is where all the amazing muscle cars are, especially if you love Mopar muscle cars, you're not gonna wanna miss this. Let's go around, show you around all these amazing cars and have a glorious day here at the Brothers Collection. Now, of course, a huge shout out to my friend Wade Ogle for getting me the invite to come up here and check out this amazing collection. It's just absolutely remarkable. There are over 350 cars here. Uh, unfortunately, due to the weather, Wade wasn't able to make it up here. His flights got canceled and uh, Hopefully we'll be able to make it up here another trip with him because it would be really special to be able to share this experience with him up here because it's just amazing cars. Absolutely incredible stuff. Let's wander around. All right, so right out the gate, we've got not one, but five Ford GTs. Four of the 2005-ish generation and then one of the newer generation, the latest generation. And right, we've got them in red, yellow, blue, silver. And behind me, we've got a row of Lamborghinis as well, starting with the Countach, the Diablo VT Roadster, an anniversary edition Aventador, and on the end, we've got a Performante. And then if you look closely in the back, they've got an LM002 as well. And they've got a handful of Mercedes as well. Of course, we've got a couple of Gullwings here that I really love, but the one that actually really strikes my fancy you never see is the SL65 AMG Black Series. I mean, if you remember, uh, Jeremy Clarkson did a special on this on Top Gear, and the car was absolutely unruly and really insane, and I'm just really impressed to see one here today. And there's even a slew of Porsches here on display. And we'll go ahead and highlight a couple of my favorites here for you, starting with this 2008 GT2. I mean, it's a 997 iteration of the Porsche, and I'm a huge fan of the GT2. And of course, we've got a GT3 RS, but of course, probably my favorite out of all of them is sitting here in the corner, and it is a 959. So the 959, of course, is a very special and unique Porsche that, while it may look a lot like a 911, is far from it as you can imagine. I mean, it's got Kevlar substructures and hollow spoked wheels that nitrogen air failed tires to keep everything balanced and, and perfect on it. And they're absolutely incredible. And it was really the competition for the Ferrari F40. And as much of a fan of Ferrari as I am, if you were gonna ask me which of the two I would take, I would definitely take the 959. It's just well, so well thought out, so well executed, and doesn't have that kit car feel that the F40 does. I know a lot of the Ferrari fans are gonna be hating me on that one. One of the things I really love about the Porsche 959 is the styling of the rear end. It's so unique and so aggressive, and it just looks really incredible. Of course, I mean, you've got the whole wide body theme going on with the fenders, both front and rear, but I mean, that rear spoiler and the entire rear design of this car is just really unique, and I absolutely love it. And then not only do they have a 930 turbo, but a 930 Targa turbo, which is incredibly rare. And of course we've got not one, but two speedsters and not but one, but two slant nose. Incredible cars and it's just really amazing. And we're just really scratching the surface at this collection because the, the exotics, sports cars, supercars that they have is just a small portion of what this amazing collection has, which is predominantly muscle cars, which we'll be heading to here shortly, but we've still got the Ferraris to head up first. All right, so you can come with me. We're gonna walk into the Ferrari section of the collection. We've got a 599 GTB, a GTO, an F12 Berlinetta. We've got an incredibly rare 
365 spider and they didn't make but a handful of these and we've got a real one here and then of course we've got a variety of other ferraris here we'll get over to the modern supercars here in a minute but right now let's go ahead and check out the classics that we've got and we've got a 59 250 gt long wheelbase california spider i mean this car is a work of art absolutely incredible you don't see these ever and of course one of my favorites here in the corner is the 275 gtb long nose alloy what an incredible and gorgeous ferrari unbelievable absolutely remarkable so let's take a closer look at some of these amazing ferraris and then head on out to the muscle cars all right for their collection of modern ferraris we've got a 575 marinello we've got the 550 barchetta we've got a 550 marinello the f40 the f50 and of course the enzo now these are some of the most incredible ferrari examples that you can imagine i mean the classics the modern I and mean, it's just truly incredible to see these all in one place at one time and I'm just in complete awe of all these cars. Now, of course, being a fan of yellow, I'd prefer to see the rarer yellow uh, F50, but just seeing an F50 in general, it's one of my favorite modern Ferraris for of the, of the greats. I mean, the Enzo, of course, when I was growing up, that was the car, but it's hard to beat the manual V12 of this car. And it's just really, really incredible to see here. And I absolutely love it. So let's go ahead and continue our journey on the Brothers Collection and see what else of these amazing cars they've got here on display. And of course here at the Brothers Collection they have a ton of Mopars. And we're going to highlight one right out of the gate here at their entryway which is a really special 71 Hemi Cuda in the fact that it's two-tone painted. If you notice that white top, it's not a vinyl top, it's actually a painted top. And according to the literature they've got with this car, it is one of two known examples to have been built. This 67 Camaro behind me is a very special, unique car known as the Cherokee Camaro. It was a styling exercise for the design team and they integrated a lot of cues from the Corvette at the time, like split bumpers and then the integrated spoiler in the back. And of course got the custom hood with the plexiglass with the Weber sticking out of it. It's just a really cool car and a lot of the design style cars that the design studio got they ended up being smashed afterwards after they were done with their exercise but this car survived and is here on display and is just absolutely stunning i really love the attention to detail on the hood with the plexiglass being able to see the webers and it just looks really really sharp all right being the big shelby fan that i am seeing this many cobras in one spot is truly amazing and i am in complete awe at the cars that they have here and the caliber of these things i mean in the back here is the daytona super coupe the only one in existence because it was the only one built and it's such an incredible opportunity to see all these cars in one place i mean this daytona super coupe will give you a little bit of insight on this one from my understanding they have the six original daytona coupes which had small blocks in them and then the next generation was going to be the super coupe with the 427. This is what Shelby was really gonna go after Ferrari with. The project was scrapped because Ford enlisted Carroll Shelby to work on the GT program. And so they actually never finished this car and the car disappeared for ever. And then it finally reappeared, got finished. And I was fortunate enough to see this car on display at the Quail, I think roughly a decade ago. And so this is the second time I've been able to see this car in person and it's just absolutely amazing and such an incredible piece of automotive history as is everything that they've got here on display. And of course, they've got one of my favorites, the 427 SC. This one is CSX 3049. And it's just such an incredible car. I mean, the Guardsman Blue just needs some Wimbledon wipe stripes and it would just be the perfect car for me. One day, we're gonna go ahead and add one of these to the collection at mine. But 
it'll be a continuation car and not one of these originals because that's definitely not in the playing cards anytime soon. Now this GT40 behind me is really unique as it is a road going GT40. And it's the first road going GT40 that was delivered to North America and Ford actually used it as their promo car for a number of months to go ahead and show the American public what a luxurious GT40 could look like sitting in their garage. And so this thing has been equipped with a bunch of options and features, but being one of the early uh, road going cars has a lot of the race uh, equipment in it, including like the race ZF transaxle and stuff. So it's, it's really cool, it's really unique, and it's absolutely stunning. And I'm, it just shows how little I know about Fords because I thought all GT40s were race cars and yet, Here's an example of a street legal road car that they actually produced. So now I'm gonna have to go and look and find out how many road cars were produced over the years. All right, one last detour and then we're gonna go ahead and head in with all the muscle cars. And we've got the Porsche Carrera GT, we've got the 918, and then back here, we've got a Veyron, we've got a Chiron, and then coming around, we've got the Saline S7 here, We've got an MC12 and an FXX Enzo. And then here in the middle, we've got a De Tomaso and a Jaguar XJ220. You know, the Jaguar XJ220 is such a cool styled car. I and mean, it's hard to believe it came out in the early 90s. I mean, I remember the first time I saw a picture of one of these things, I was just in complete awe of how incredible the car looked and how space aged it looked. And it's really unfortunate that this car didn't take off. I mean, they had a whole slew of problems. I think it was originally debuted with like a V12 or something, and then when it actually went into production, got a six cylinder. And so, of course, a lot of people were disappointed in that when they were promised a V12. And so, a lot of problems, but it's still, it's an amazingly cool car, and I'm really fortunate to be able to see one here, and I'm glad to be able to share it with all of you. So that's enough of the highlight tour up here in the front section of the collection. Let's hit the main section where all the muscle cars are, especially all the Mopars, because it's just absolutely breathtaking. All right, so here we are in the main area of the Brothers Collection, which is all the muscle cars up front. We've got a whole slew of Corvettes, a lot of historic, significant cars here. Uh, I don't know too much about my Corvettes. We'll try and highlight some of the, the really prominent ones, but then of course we'll get to the areas that I know very well, which is the Mopars. We've also got some GM cars over there. We've got some Fords over there, Pontiacs over here. We're gonna take you around and see what all we can show you today. I mean, it's just so incredible to see all of these various generations of Corvettes. I mean, we've got a whole slew of first generation C1s from the first years all the way up to the last years. And then if we come around the corner here, we've got a whole row of both C2 and C3 Corvettes as well. And it's just remarkable to see all of these cars in one location. I know, I'm repeating myself on that because this collection is just so massive. I believe we've got over 350 cars here on display and it's just absolutely incredible. Let's continue our journey, shall we? Now they've got these Corvettes segregated over here by themselves and there's a reason for that. Every one of these has the very rare and very desirable L88 427 race package in it. And we've got one, two, three, four of the C3s and two of the C2s, including one of the 15 Roadsters. I mean, these are absolutely incredible cars. I am seeing one L88 whether it be a C2 or a C3 is remarkable and all of in itself. But to see six of them in one location, including one of the 67 Roadsters, it's, it's amazing. It's just absolutely brilliant. And I can't believe I'm here filming all this for all of you and just taking this all in. It's, it's a historic occasion. All right, now here we are in the Chevrolet wing. Now I know a little bit about these because of course my dad is a big Chevy guy. I, of course, he's got that 57 Nomad and of course that means I noticed that 57 convertible right out of the gate. And, but another one that really caught my eye, if you notice right here is this red 65 Malibu SS. This one, if you notice down here, has the 396 badge on. This is equipped with the Z16 package, which is a very, very rare car. They only made looks like 201 of these with a 396 in the four speed. I mean, the 
big block Chevelles really didn't start until 66. So 65 being a 396 four-speed car is really rare, really incredible to see. I've only seen a handful of them in person over the years. And so seeing one here, of course, it's totally fitting and it's really a great example of a Z16 equipped Chevelle. Now, as you'd expect, there's a whole row of amazing Camaros here. This one here on the end is a 69 ZL1 Camaro. Now, what I'm told is very special about this one is one of only a couple that was equipped with the RS package. So you got your 427 big block in it, and you've got all the fancy options with the RS package. And of course, you've got another SYC uh, Yanko next to it, another one down there, and the row just keeps going and going. I and mean, these are amazing historic cars, and there's a little bit of something for everybody, to, regardless of what your automotive taste is here, and I'm just in awe of all of it. We've even got a pair of Hearst Oldsmobiles here, and what's really cool is this one has a giant shifter in the back of it, which was used for the um, promo tour with Linda Vaughn back in the day, so that's really cool to see that here. It is uh, one of two Hearst Olds convertibles, and what's really amazing about this is if you notice it's hard to see, in the roof, it actually has the gold stripe continuing from the deck lid that you get on the roof of the coupes. And this coupe is the prototype for the 69 Hearst Olds, and having these two cars here is really iconic and really amazing. All right, now we're heading in the Pontiac section, which I've I really know probably the least about the Pontiacs. Well, maybe those in the Olds and Buicks, but regardless, there are a few here that I do know. Of course, you got your Firebirds, your Trans Ams, your GTOs, but in the back here, they have four of the eight 69 Trans Am convertibles. And it's absolutely remarkable to have this many of them in one location. And for you GT350 lovers, we've got a row of them. I mean, look at all these. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven white and blue stripe GT350s. I mean, all of them have various pedigrees and provenances with them, and it's just really crazy to see them right here. Oh, and look, we come around the corner, there's another white and blue GT350. I mean, this one, has a factory Paxton supercharger installed in it. I mean, all these cars here are just incredibly historic. And another one that is a Paxton supercharge. Actually, all of these cars in this section right here have Paxton superchargers on them. I mean, how often do you see a factory supercharged Mustang? Not ever. And they've got a handful of them right here on display. And this is one of four 66 GT350 convertibles and one of two that are four-speed cars. I mean, of course, I can say the uh, obvious that I've never seen one before, but when you think about it, that there are only four of them built, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, how incredible is that? And if having one of the four 66 convertibles isn't enough, there's another one. They've got two of them. They literally have 50% of the 66 GT350 convertibles produced. One four-speed, one automatic, absolutely stunning i'm in complete awe amazing collection we've got here let's continue on and see what else we can show you now while the brothers do have a variety of very rare fords as well in their collection i don't know too much about my fords uh, but there are a couple more that I really want to highlight that are very unique and extremely rare. The first one is this Galaxy 500 four-door. Now, you're probably wondering, what's so fancy about a four-door Galaxy 500? Well, the fact that this is equipped with not only a four-speed transmission, but the R-Code 427 race engine. So this is the only known example of a Galaxy 500 four-door equipped with the 427 R code engine, four speed, and it's just really amazing and in incredible condition. Now, the other one I want to highlight is this 1957 Ranchero. Now, 
What's so special about a Ranchero? This one is one of two equipped with a factory Paxton supercharger. I mean, how incredible is that? In the 50s, factory supercharged vehicles. All right, this 67 Mustang Fastback definitely has to get some uh, special attention. Not only does it have a very unique color, it only has three original miles on it. The car is an absolute time capsule and is really amazing to see here. And I'm sure it's nothing super fancy like a GT500 or anything like that. It's a 289 Fastback 2 Plus 2, but it's a unique color combination. Very, very well preserved and just amazing to be able to see it here and of course what car collection would be complete without one of the 48 tuckers they made 51 of these cars the car was uh, way ahead of its time and really an incredible testament to american ingenuity and the automotive industry in the 40s now of course as you know if you've seen the movie or know anything about the tucker i mean it, so many problems with the company and the uh, lawsuits and dealing with the big three but it's such a cool car and so advanced and way ahead of its time. And it just is really iconic. And I love seeing these any chance I get and seeing one here at the Brothers Collection, of course, is no exception to that. Now this duster behind me is truly unique and very special. Back in the early 70s, Mopar was doing their rapid transit system um, show cars. And so they did show cars for each of the body platforms that they had and took them on tour and they'd had custom paint jobs and wild body kits done to them. And this is one of those vehicles. This is the 1970 duster that was used as the uh, show car for that rapid transit system show circuit. Now this was used both in 70 and 71. In 1970, it had a red paint scheme on it. And because the body didn't really change in 71, they went ahead and reused it, gave it a facelift, painted it this green that you see here today. Now, of course, my favorite are the Hemi E-Body convertibles, which they've got, looks like 10 of them on display here of I think 42 of them produced. I mean, this is absolutely remarkable to see all of these cars. I mean, we've got Alpine White, We've got Lemon Twist Yellow. Now this one, this 71 in particular, is very special and iconic because it's known as the Otis Chandler car, which is also the car that was the inspiration for the Nash Bridges Cuda. So when there are rumors that the original Nash Bridges Cuda was painted Lemon Twist Yellow, it was because Don Johnson saw a picture of this car on the back of a muscle car book and due to the lighting it looked darker than this car and well they got one painted it this color and then when they shot the show the first pilot they noticed that the color washed out so that's when they went ahead and changed it to what we now know to be one of the caterpillar fleet yellows which if you saw my recent video on i break down the actual color because a lot of people say well including myself say well it couldn't have been a caterpillar fleet yellow because that color is so uh, muddy and dark but in reality cat had a whole slew of colors and they of course changed over the decades and it is in fact one of the caterpillar fleet yellows that ended up being on the nash bridges car not the lemon twist yellow we have here and it's also not the bahama yellow which we have over here so let's go ahead and continue on through look at these amazing hemi e-body convertibles now this one here the b5 blue car is one of two b5 blue four speed cars and if i'm not mistaken this might be the one that crossed the auction block on eBay and it was the first seven figure Hemi e-body convertible in the early 2000s. I mean, I remember watching that auction uh, as a teenager and just complete awe to see this car sell for $1.3 million. And here it is all these years later on display the Brotherhood Collection and able to see it. And it's just really, really amazing. And of course we come down here and we've got a couple of the Hemi Challenger convertibles. This one in green with the green interior. It's really amazing that it still has the green interior parts because those are so hard to find and you can see there's a little deterioration on the rear panels but otherwise it looks absolutely incredible and then we've got another one here in plum crazy purple absolutely stunning the car looks so good and so unique having the white stripe with the black interior and of course it's got that famous pistol grip shifter that we all love so much now on the other side we'll get over there in a minute they've got bunch of 70 Hemi Cuda convertibles.
Now, one of the most amazing things that I, I like about this display here, the Brothers Collection, besides, of course, the 10 Hemi e-body convertibles that are on these amazing platforms, is the display of AARs and TAs in just about every color you can imagine. I believe they've got every color that was offered for the AAR and TAs, except for two. So they're still hunting down a couple of them, but they've got some of the heavy hitters. I mean, you've got like your Panther Pinks, your FC7, Plum Crazies, B5 Blues. I mean, it's an impressive collection of cars that they've got here. And I love seeing all these Mopars. I mean, the Hemi cars are amazing. I love Hemi cars. But of course, as you guys know, with how my Challenger set up like a TA, I'm really a sucker for these TA cars and these AARs. It's just really, really awesome to see so many of them on this amazing display rack, like you have your Matchbox or Hot Wheels cars at home. They also have a matching pair of Hemi Daytonas, which is really incredible. One four-speed car, one automatic car. But what's really unique about this one is it has the very rare Kelsey Hayes recalled wheels. I've only seen pictures of these wheels. I've actually never seen a set of these installed on a car before and being able to see it on a Hemi Daytona is pretty incredible. Of course, the slew of Hemi and six pack cars they've got here is just absolutely incredible. This red 71 Hemi Cuda is the one that was recently featured on Graveyard Cars where Mark Warman and um, Tony D'Agostino were came over and were did a huge in-depth overview of this car. Um, there's just too many of them, of course, to go over in detail in the, today, but we'll go ahead and highlight some that are of particular interest to myself, and I hope you like them as well. This 70 Hemi Cuda definitely caught my eye. It's equipped with a four speed, but the color is really what set it off for me. I've never seen a Hemi Cuda in Citron Mist before. And it's a really unique color. I don't know if it's something I would choose for myself, but it really gives it like a gentleman's muscle car feel with the color, with the white interior, the white vinyl top. And it's just really, really a good looking combination. Again, I don't know if I could have gotten it for myself, but at the same time, it looks really sharp and of course, Going with that gentleman's motif, there's no hockey stripe on it. So other than the shaker hood with the emblem that says Hemi Cuda on it, you really have no indication of what is under the hood of this amazing machine. And of course they have an entire row of Hemi Challengers. And so we're just gonna go ahead and highlight a couple of them for you. This orange one here has a sunroof and that was factory option, which is incredibly rare. One of my favorites though, of course, is the blue with the silver shaker bubble. And then this one is very unique. If you notice, it's got a TA hood on it. Now, a lot of you guys out there, if you're big Mopar aficionados, you understand the significance of this car. But for those of you that don't know, the TA hood on the Hemi car was a very rare option. It was the N94 package. And they only had a couple of them that left the factory with this setup. And this is the first time I've only ever seen it in person and it's really incredible to see. Now, of course, I'm not a big fan of red. I like blue, as you all know, but this car is truly historic and really incredible to be here. And of course, we've got more blue ones and then purple ones. The Hemi cars really look good in the FC7. Of course, got the white stripe with the white top, really set it off. 
This one's very unique, a 446 pack car. It's got a nice orange stripe down the side of it. Really different setup. Now my favorite though for the 71s has to be down here and that is the plum crazy purple with white stripes. I mean, this color combination just looks so great on this car. It just really screams early 70s for me. And of course, you've got another car here that's got the Hemi in it with a factory sunroof. So really amazing to see not only this many Hemi cars in one place, but so many very rare, very historic and important cars to the hobby all at the Brothers Collection. It's just mind blowing, absolutely stunning. All right, everybody, well, that's gonna be a wrap today on this video, this adventure for all of you. I don't know how long this video is gonna be or if I'm gonna have to break it up into multiple videos because I've been filming for over three hours now. There's just so many amazing cars here. I hope you've enjoyed this tour and the highlights that I've shown you of some of my favorites they've got here on display. It's really hard to nail down just one favorite vehicle because there's so many amazing cars here. So what are your guys' favorites? What did you guys like from this uh, adventure today? Do you like these types of adventures I'm taking you on? Let me know in the comments section below because I take all of your comments to heart and really want to help grow this channel and shape it the way that all of you really love and enjoy. And on that note, guys, I will see you in the next video.